Hello, Easy Cat for you here in AutoCAD 2015 for beginners. In this second tutorial, we will cover new drawings and templates, we'll begin drawing, and we'll use some basic commands. In AutoCAD, we have the option to open an existing drawing or start a new one. Both options can be found in the Create section or in the Application menu. When you launch a new drawing, CAD uses a predefined template file. If we pull the template's drop-down menu below the Start Drawing button, we have the option to select which template we want to use. Now let's click New from the Quick Access Toolbar to see that in CAD, templates are identified by the extension DWT. A CAD template will have a lot of predefined settings to minimize the time setting up the drawing environment. For example, if in your country you use the metric system, you select the ACAD ISO DWT. But if you're in a country that uses the imperial system like here in the United States, we will use the ACAD.DWT and then we'll click open. On the other hand, all existing drawings will have the file extension DWG. The new drawing is based on the template of your selection and it is automatically assigned the default name of drawing 1. It is good practice to rename it as soon as you can. Now, when we're doing so, a caution note, if you will be sharing this with someone else, is to save the drawing in one of the previous versions that the other person will be able to open. Pull the list of available options from the File Type drop-down menu and use the one compatible with the other person's CAD, like AutoCAD 2007 or a different one. On the other hand, we are encouraged to create our own template if we need it, and it should include everything that can be used repetitively in a drawing like blocks, dimension styles, layers, symbols, etc. And of course, we'll come back to this subject later on when it has some more meaning for you. For now, you can save a template just by selecting the DWT format when saving, and you can see that it even gives you the option to specify a description for it. Of course, this is optional, but you can use it if you want to. Now we're ready to start drawing in AutoCAD and we'll learn as we go over some video tutorials accomplishing this small kitchen project in phases. Here on screen you have an idea of what we'll do, so just get a screenshot to have this as reference. First, we'll cover the 2D part and then we'll switch over to create this 3D model of the same kitchen. So, first of all, we have to determine in AutoCAD the units of measurement we will use. For you to understand this concept, this line on screen could represent 10 inches or 10 feet. And not all disciplines will use the same system. So, we type on screen units and hit enter. Or we can go to application menu drawing utilities and then click on units on the right. This will give us the drawing units dialog box. Here we can specify the units of measurement we will use throughout the drawing. For the length, I will change it to architectural. For the precision, I will use 132nd instead of the default 116 of an inch. Now for the angle, I'll keep the default metric with precision of 0. The insertion scale, we can leave it as inches as well, and now just click OK to accept. Now it's time to start drawing, so we will call line command. Have in mind that we can enter it directly with the keyboard or click it from the ribbon. First prompt is specified first point, so we'll click anywhere on screen. The next prompt is for the second point, but before clicking on screen, let's press FA with our keyboard so we activate ortho mode to draw only in straight lines. This is one of many drawing aids and are located down here on the status bar. We can toggle ortho mode on and off by clicking the icon here as well. Now to enter the next point we can click on screen or we can specify the length of our line. I will type 24 feet 2 inches. Since we are using architectural drawing units we need to use the feet symbol but when you enter just the numbers without any symbol, CAD assumes we are referring to inches. Now we hit enter and you see the line is completed. Now you have the option to keep entering segments to this line with the command still active. So changing direction now towards the bottom, 
I'll enter 17 feet 6 inches and hit enter again. Now to close the command we either hit enter again or hit escape key or the space bar. To repeat the previous command press enter or the space bar and as you see it will activate what we had before the previous command. Now if at any point you feel stuck hitting escape might be the solution and you can always use the undo button remember. Now let's use a different command from the ribbon command P line. The prompts will be the same as before and we'll start on the endpoint of the previous line segment and from here going left we'll enter 15 feet 4 inches and hit enter. Now going up enter 5 feet 6 inches enter again and toward the left use 8 feet 10 inches. This will give you a little bit of practice. The final segment is 12 feet but you can just go ahead and click on the other end up here and finally hit enter again or spacebar or escape to finish the command. Now you cannot tell the difference between lines and polylines but for short lines are individual independent objects in CAD and a polyline is a single object composed of multiple segments. If you select a line it's separate from the other one we did but if we select the P line you see it is a single object because all of it is selected and this is the reason why most of the time P line is preferred over line when drawing in CAD. Now let's use a command you won't have in the ribbon. Type with the keyboard P edit and hit enter. With this we'll transform all of these lines in a single polyline or object. The first prompt is select polyline or and the other option we have is as you see down here multiple. Let's select it by clicking on it or just typing the letter M and hitting enter. Now the next prompt is select objects so we'll click on the object we want to edit or we can use a window selection to include all of the objects at once. Now hit enter to finish selecting and we see the prompt requesting if we want to convert all this to a single polyline. Click yes. Now we see the prompt requesting enter an option and give you a set of choices. We'll click on join because that's what we want to convert them into a single object. For the first distance we enter a zero or just hit enter again and finally to get out of the command hit escape. Now we select the object again and as you see it turned into a single object. Now one of the advantages of having this as a single object is easily seen in our next operation. To provide a width for our wall we'll repeat our lines on the inside at 8 inches which is regular width for an exterior wall. But instead of doing all this process again line by line we'll use a new command. Let's go to the ribbon again and select in the modify module command offset. The prompt initially requests the offset distance or we will enter 8 for 8 inches and hit enter. Now it asks for select object to offset so click on the line and you see that the request now is specify point on side to offset or. And at the same time it gives you a preview as you move your crosshair either moving to the inside or to the outside. We want it to the inside so we'll click on the inside and here you have the result. Now to close the command we click enter again and we're done. To complete our walls we'll use a new command. We'll use command rectangle on the ribbon but remember we can also enter the re request by typing it. First we'll enter the initial point on the screen and then it requests the second point which in a case like this we don't have. So we'll use the option dimension to specify the size. Now for the length request we'll enter 7 feet and hit enter. Remember to enter the fit symbol. And for the width just use 8 and hit enter. Now the final prompt is for the position of the rectangle and just click on the screen moving your crosshair or mouse towards the inside to accept the correct position. Since the final position of the wall is over here we will use command move to put it in its final place. So we go to modify tab again and click on move. The first prompt is select objects 
notice down here that it tells you the amount of objects you have selected. Now, when you're done selecting them, just hit enter, and the following requests specify base point or. A base point can be anywhere and will be used by CAD as a reference for the operation or movement. It could be on the object or outside of it. Just make sure it serves the purpose you're looking for. In our case, we don't have a reference for the second point, so we're better off using the option we have down here, Displacement. So just select it either by typing a shortcut or clicking on it. Then we have to enter the displacement as we saw in tutorial number one. So we'll enter 3 feet 6 inches, comma 0, comma 0, and finally hit enter to complete the operation. Now, what happens if by any chance cat crashes at this point? Well, chances are we'll lose some of what we just did. So for the next tutorial, we'll meet a couple of features that will save us some time and a lot of headaches. We'll cover a lot of drawing aids like grid, snap, polar tracking, object snap tracking, and others, and how to implement them as we draw. So I guess this is all for now, folks. Hope you guys liked the video, and if so, please leave a comment. Remember, if you enjoyed, give a like. You can also subscribe to my channel for more, post any questions you might have, Thanks for watching and see you next time.